Hello everyone, I'm Fadwa Mansouri. Welcome to this first video in a series about how to do a literature review painlessly. I know there is no master's or doctoral student in their right mind who would feel like doing a literature review. They'd rather go traveling the world or having fun of some kind. So, when you ask about why you need to do a literature review, the answer is usually pretty straight up. You need to use it as you work on your paper or thesis. It can organize and summarize what is known about a topic so that you have an overview of the key studies currently in this area and it will be easier to know what's already been done. When you hear that, your first task might be, okay, but why don't I just do my study and that's it? Why would I want to know what's been done before me or all that hard stuff? Or is it just the academic institution's way of making this degree even harder than it already has been? Well, guess what? A literature review is not just about what academia wants. It is actually about what you want. Think of the literature as a group of wise people having an important discussion. Everyone else is standing around, nodding their heads. You can't hear all they're saying, but you're pretty certain that that topic they are talking about is simply the one that you have been reading and studying for months. And you think you have an important input to provide. The thing is, by wanting to do this research, you are actually trying to join their discussion. Only, in order to join the discussion, you need to know what they already said and what they are talking about right now. If you can figure out what's left to be said, you got yourself a potential opportunity to speak. Once you carry out your study the way it should be, you have actually obtained a seat around the table. And when you publish your work, you have officially joined the conversation. And each time somebody cites your work, it indicates that you're ranked with the wise people. So now, let's join the discussion. Step 1. Getting to know who the wise people are and what each of them is saying. Obviously, we're talking about the scholars and their studies with the methods and findings and implications they include. This corresponds to step one of the literature review, which is searching for the sources and materials that are relevant to your topic. Google Scholar is an excellent way to go about this. To do this, you can treat Google Scholar as you treat Google. And we're going to get into more details about that in our next videos. Step 2. What's already been said? To answer this question, we need to know about the previous research done on the topic. Why would you want to know about it? Well, you wouldn't want to repeat anybody else's work. Would you? Imagine that in the middle of a discussion. So now, the question is, is everything the scholar said worth our attention? In other words, are all the previous studies worth our attention? The answer is no, only the types that are 1. Specifically relevant to your topic, Two, credible and reliable. Three, current. This selection process is called source selection and evaluation. It is actually pretty easy to identify relevant, credible, and current material thanks to great scholarly databases like Google Scholar and JSTOR. A video is specifically devoted to making this even easier for you. Question: How to know if these sources are actually in the discussion about your topic? 
One efficient way of finding out is reading the abstract. In the abstract, everything about the study is summarized in one paragraph. Once you read it, you will decide whether or not to go through the reading itself. And this would save you precious time. Once you find the right materials, looking at the references would guide you to other relevant sources. It's as if the writer of that article had already done the research for you, and that would make it even easier, and it would make you gain a lot of time. Check this process in more detail in a separate video. Now, one interesting question. What are the wise people agreeing on and disagreeing about? This is step 3. Reading, analyzing, and structuring. All in the same operation. Here is how. As you read, be strategic. Keep watch for themes, debates, agreements, disagreements, or anything that you feel is prominent throughout your reading. Now, based on your topic and what you identify in the literature, you will be able to establish an outline for your literature review. In this, it is important to trust your instincts. Ask yourself this question. If there were some kind of imaginary line of logic driving the material that I chose to represent, what type of line would best serve my topic? Chronological? Thematic? Methodological? Theoretical? Or integrative? In other words, would the line of logic that is going to drive my own literature review be one that would present the studies that I have found according to their time of publication, their themes, their kind of methods, their theories or models, or else driven by my own line of thought? The one that leads to my own argument. Whatever you do, trust your instincts and you will identify the best structure that serves your topic. I myself am going to use the integrative structure in the example I'm going to present in the next videos. But however important all of this is, there is a vitally important question you should not forget. It is about the empty seat around the discussion table, the one that you're going to make yours by answering the question, what's left to be said in the discussion? This is what researchers call the gap. What's left to be said or the research gap can be a lot of things. Let's just simplify it for now. This gap might be a topic that has not yet been studied at all or a topic that has not been studied in a particular method or a population that has never been included in a study about a specific topic. These are three types. There are more that I might discuss in a separate video, but right now I'm going to tell you where to find the gap. There are a lot of ways to find gaps, but I'm going to tell you about one. This is my favorite. In the articles you read, look at the end. In the last sections, the conclusions or the limitations or literally the further research sections, read them and you will find what's left to be said. We've been speaking for the last couple of minutes about what to look for while reading in order to be able to have an analytical and critical overview of the literature. More about the how-to in the coming videos. If you have made it so far, let me tell you that you are already past the hard part. Congratulations! The other good news is that you have already formed a good idea about the outline of your literature review. Now is the core of this step. 
Now is the time to dominate the literature. When you find the right sources, each time you read a source or even skim it, do what is called an annotated bibliography. It's like a description of the essence of the source, of the document, of the article, or the chapter. So what do you do? First, you devote a notebook to this, either electronic or paper. For each document, devote a page or a card. At the top of the page of the card, put the citation that includes the title, the date of publication, you know, either an APA citation or an MLA citation, depends on the field that you're working in. Then write a small paragraph about what the source is about in general and a second paragraph in which you describe why and how this source is related to your work. The magical stuff is right now. Once you accumulate your annotated bibliographies, it means that you have your literature review dominated. The annotated bibliography is the trick that's going to make writing your literature review seem like a joke. The final step. Here comes your moment. Now, you are going to be the one who's going to summon the wise people you have selected for an important discussion of your own designing and with your own objectives. What this means is that all what's left to do is assemble the paragraphs of your annotated bibliography according to the outlines line of logic that you have selected to best serve your main argument. Then add linking and transition language between those paragraphs. At last, add an introduction and a conclusion to your beautifully finished literature review. This last step is where you have the most fun. It's the one that feels like an accomplishment. And the end result is that you realize you have been writing your own story while writing the literature review. Check this last step in detail in a separate video. Don't forget to share the video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos about your academic journey and more. Thank you very much and see you in the next videos.